Welcome everybody. In this video, we're going to talk about animations in Articulate Storyline 360. And uh, the same principles apply to Articulate Storyline 3, just to make you aware. Also, whilst I got your attention, um, why don't you go and subscribe to the channel, like the video. In the channel, we've got a playlist for Articulate Storyline with over 40 videos in it, in that playlist. So there's loads of stuff. I've been using Articulate Storyline for many, many, many years. Oh, I used to use Articulate Storyline 2 back in the day. Anyway, let's talk about animations. That's what we're going to talk about. So this is a slide in Articulate Storyline. Uh, I've created another slide here as well. And animations is when an object animates and you know comes flying in or goes flying off the screen or whatever you want. So that is animations. The way to make an animation is well relatively simple. You know, you lay out your slide exactly how you want it. So don't touch animations yet. Your first thing to do is just lay out your slide. And then click on the object you want to animate. Once you clicked on it, go to animations at the top, and then you've got your options. You've got entrance animations and exit animations. So entrance animations is when the user, the learner, comes onto the slide for the first time. It's how do you want that animation to enter the screen? And then you've got exit animations. Now exit animations I don't use as often, but you might have an animation on a screen. It might disappear after a couple of seconds. So that'll be an exit animation. Okay, generally speaking, I'll have something animate to come on, but I probably won't have it going off unless there's a special circumstance. Let's show you how to do this though. So to do an animation, you click on the object you want to animate and where you've got none, click on that. You've then got your options. You've got fade, grow, fly in, shape, white split, float in, wheel, random bar, spin, and so on. What I recommend you do, the first time you ever do it, click on all of them and just, just see what it looks like. When you do it, the way to see what it looks like is to choose the animation and then down the bottom, you can play, see this little button here? You can play the actual slide. So because you're going to be playing the slide, you'll see what the animation does. So if I click on it, always give it a second. And there you go. You can see what happened. That's the option I chose, which was random bars. Try it again. You saw that it do the random bars. Now, it's not the nicest one to use and uh, didn't work particularly well on this very small object. Let's show you another one though. I'll show you a different one. So instead of random bars, let's have a fade. And click on the play button. You can see it fades in. There we have it. You could also preview the slide. And if you go to preview this slide, you can also see the animation taking place as well. And there you go. You can very briefly see it if I replay it. There you go. You can see it does a little fade whereas all of the other objects on the screen stay as they are. Now, let's show you some more interesting things than that. So I've shown you how to animate a, a, a small box. Let's say you want to animate this text where it says animations. Yeah, that's the title. Click on the text or click on the text box, I should say. And then let's choose fly in. And then what you want to do is choose the effect option. So where do you want it to fly in from? Do you want to fly from the, from the bottom, from the, from the top? From the left, what do you want? We we'll use from the left. Also, what's the duration? Now, this is the duration of the animation. So, the animation will last for 0.75 seconds, so just under a second. You could increase that. So, let's do that. You should see two animations now. Also, you know which objects are going to animate because they've got a little star next to them. So, what we're going to do is press play. And there you have it. It comes in. Let's change this one. So we did this one for two seconds. Let's increase that though. Let's increase that to six, six seconds. There you go. So you should see a noticeable difference. So nothing's happening and it's slowly coming in after six or over a period of six seconds. Now I've got to be very clear there. It's animating it for a period of six seconds. It's not coming in after six seconds. If you want something to come in after a certain point in time, you need to deal with this timeline down the bottom. And we'll talk about that more later. Let's animate some more of these objects. So we want to have an effect here. We want to do a, uh, you know, let's uh, do a split effect on this one. Here's my logo down here. Let's do a, let's do a swivel effect. And let's preview this entire screen now. There we have it. We've got this coming in. Those two are very animated. You probably didn't even notice that. There we go. You can see it happening. There we have it. 
so you can see how to animate. Now, something to be very clear, this slide, before I added all my animations into it, looked quite nice. Now, it looks a mess, okay? So be careful with those animations. Just because you can animate an object doesn't mean you should, okay? So you've got to be very clear with that. Also, think about your object. So if you've got an object, this object here has a text box or text within that object, you can animate it. If this had an object on top of it, let's pretend this was on there. Yeah, so let's pretend it looked like this. These are separate elements. So this box with the text in there is one element, and this is a different element or different object, I should probably say. So if you're going to be animating them, make sure that they're, you know, it could be a good idea to group them together before you do your animations. Um, you know, just, just make sure to look professional, the animate all together. Something else I'd like to talk about, actually, let's do an exit one. I'll show you exits, yeah? So this continue button. Let's have a, let's give it an entrance animation. And let's also give it an exit animation. So we just have, well, fade. Let's see how that works. There you go, so it's faded in. And then it's faded out. Now, the time in which it faded out was at the end of the timeline. So down here is at the end of this timeline. It will apply that fade out animation because that's the exit. So the exit is always going to be linked to the end of the timeline down here. So after five seconds, it's going to animate out. Let's now talk about the difference between animations and transitions. So a transition is moving from one slide to another. The animation is what happens on that slide. So if I want to introduce a transition, it's when the slide opens up. So let's do this in an example. So I'm on this slide, I'm going to give a transition of random bars. And it's going to impact the entire slide. Let's demonstrate this. So I'm going to preview the entire course, which is just two slides. So slide one, go to the next slide. You can see random bars is happening and then all the animations as well. Yes, it looked terrible, but you get the idea of the difference between an animation and a transition. I'm going to turn the, I'll go back to this slide here. You can see there's a transition there of random bars. I'm going to turn that off to none. But transitions are useful. They can look very nice as well. They can break up the project a little bit as well. So I do recommend using transitions, but just bear them in mind. Transitions and animations are separate things entirely. So going back to animations. So we've talked about fading something in. So an entrance, we talked about an exit animation. Let's talk about timing as well. So if I move this time bar up here, you can have things happen at certain times. So we see my create action logo there. So this is the object here. It's a picture one, it's create action. And I might not want that to even be on the screen until two seconds. And now let's just preview that so you can see it. So we've got all my animations on the go. And then after two seconds, this animation starts. Yeah, just to show you that in context again, if I was to have this after zero seconds, so it starts at the same time as everything else on the slide, you can see it's already there. But if I change that to four and a half seconds, preview this slide, it's not there. There's nothing happening with it. It's all empty. And then, boom, it's there. The reason it was so fast, okay, so that time, I'll just show you that animation again. It was really, really fast, and there's a reason behind that. There you go, you can see it's really, really fast. Reason being is because it's trying to fit in the two and a half second duration into this short time period here, which is just, just over half a second. Now, if I was to extend this timeline, let's say to there, and I was to preview it again, notice I've not touched the animation, done nothing with it, I've just extended the timeline. All right, it's gonna come in, and you'll notice it'll be quite slow when it does come in, there you go. Remember, I've not changed the animation. It's because it didn't have enough time to actually do the animation when it was here. So if you're gonna do things like that, always you know, look at your timeline as well. Does it have enough time for it? Some objects you might want to have no animation on whatsoever. So this object here is always here. So if we preview it, it's always here. Let's just have a look. There you go, how to create simple animations articulates to 360. It's there, it's doing nothing. If 
advanced to move this along to two seconds. I'll have to preview it now. After two seconds, it's just going to come in. So one, two, there we have it, right on the queue. No animation to it other than just appearing. It didn't fade in, it didn't scroll in, it didn't have any fancy bars, it just appeared after two seconds. So the things to bear in mind when you're doing animations are clicking on the actual object, going to animations, choosing if you want an entrance animation, which will begin at the start of its time period, or do you want an exit animation, which will appear at the end of it, and how long do you want it to take? So this is the duration of the actual animation. And also, when do you want it to start from? So it might be for six seconds. So I'll click on this one here. So this one has two and a half seconds, and it's gonna start from just over four second mark. Or it might be for two and a half seconds, starting from two seconds, or from the very beginning of the timeline. Make sure you also you've got enough time at the end for it to complete its animation. Otherwise, you, know, you will need to extend the timeline. So there we go. So that's extending the timeline. You might also want a long timeline and you might want an object to just end during it. If you wish to do so, by right clicking on it, normally it will have us show until end, which will have this little triangle there showing us right to the end. And you can see it goes all the way to the end as well. What you can do is untick that and then drag it back to where you want it to be. And that way it will just disappear after that point. So let's do it to seven seconds. So it's gonna, let's preview this. So let's count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There we go, it disappeared. No animation on the end of it because I told it just to disappear. There's no exit. But if I'd using exit, Let's have something that's really obvious. I'll go for that one there. Preview this slide again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Again, it exited with the animation. There we have it. Now, please note, for anyone hiring me out there, this is not how my slides normally look. They don't have random objects flying all over them, but for all of you learning how to use Articulate Storyline, hopefully this has been a useful guide on animations, how to do an entrance animation, how to do an exit animation, how to adjust the time in which it does enter or exit, how to extend the timeline if required, and the difference between animations and transitions, and transitions being the thing that affects the slides in its entirety when the user goes from one slide to another. Hopefully you found this video useful. Please subscribe to my channel for more Articulate Storyline videos. Also I do Camtasia videos and a host of other software related products. Like the video, comment down below if you've got any questions. Thank you very much.